In this video, I will demonstrate some of the basic features of Logger Pro's video analysis. I've opened up Logger Pro and I want to put a movie in, so I click at the top Insert Movie and then you tell it where your movie is located. So I put a movie on my desktop and it's called Dune Buggy. This is a video clip of a battery operated toy car that just goes across a lab table about one meter. In the video I put a caption of 335 grams just in case we would need that to study energy or momentum. Now this video window that opens up can be resized as desired and you'll notice at the top 0 slash 116. This means we've marked 0, none of the 116 frames. Since the digital video is 30 frames per second, that means we have almost four sections of mo four seconds of motion. Now, I could mark all 116 frames as the video shows the dune buggy moving across the top, or I can skip frames. So there are times when you might want to mark every frame. There are times when you can skip. For the purposes of this demonstration video, I'm going to skip frames. So I can do that either by clicking at the top where it says Options and go to Movie Options, or I can right click on the movie window to get my movie options. And in these options toward the bottom, it says Advance the Movie. I'm going to go three frames after adding a new point. This means I'll be marking every 3 30ths of a second, which is every tenth of a second. So I tell it OK. Now in order to mark the location of the dune buggy in each frame, I have to click on this lower right hand corner toolbar or button to bring up this right side toolbar and the second button down is the add point. Once I click on it, anywhere I left click on this movie window, it will put a dot and put the pixel location in my data table. So I have to be careful. I'm going to mark the middle of the front wheel and try to get that same place in every frame. So we're actually seeing where the object is at every 3 30ths of a second. So this will be about uh, 40 or so marks, so I'll go through and mark pretty much every one of them here. Now, there are times when you will accidentally mark in the wrong place, and you can go back and correct that, but it's usually, I find it's easier to correct a mistake after you've gone ahead and marked everything to go back to that spot. But of course, it's always best not to mark in the wrong spot. So as I go through and do this, imagine um, you've got this many students with this many stopwatches and they're all timing it, uh, seeing where the object is at different times. When I get to the end of the clip, it stops and I can um, move that around but if I click on the data table over here I can expand it and what you can see is as you mark a video the time in seconds and see it was every 3 30ths of a um, second so every tenth of a second it gives the x and y pixel locations and the x and y pixel velocities so we don't really want pixels. We want centimeters, meters, inches. So the way that we scale it is this fourth icon down is the meter stick icon. It says set scale. I'm going to drag, left click and drag my mouse from the left end of the meter stick to the right end. And it will ask me when I let go of my mouse what this distance is. Well, by default, it says one meter. Um, I'm going to call it 100 centimeters. As soon as I click OK, all of the pixel 
locations and velocities in the data table are updated to centimeters. So now we have the X and Y positions in centimeters and the X and Y velocities. Now, the initial position we marked is at 13.89 comma 40. Well, the origin by default is the lower left-hand corner of the movie window. So the third button down lets us place the origin anywhere we want. And wherever I put it, the data table automatically updates the values. Notice that the velocity values don't change whenever we move our origin. Speed is independent of the exact position. It's only the differences. So if I want to put my origin at the first point we marked, the starting point, I can put it, hover over that first dot, click there, and if you're really careful, the X and Y locations will be really close to zero. So the closer they are to zero, looks like my Y is pretty good. That's um, 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. That's pretty darn close to zero, even though my X is a little bit off. So I've marked the video, I've moved the origin, and I've scaled it. So you have to be careful. If I click anywhere on here again, I'm going to move my origin. So I want to go up and click that top button, set point, so that now I don't accidentally click and um, move the origin or something. So I can right click and copy this movie window and I can paste it into a Word document or a slideshow. I'm going to click on the graph and so as we were marking the video the data table was automatically being filled in and a position graph of X and Y um, was automatically generated. I don't want the Y so if I left click over here on the column, I can tell it to just give me the X. Now I'm going to clean up my graph and label it so I can right click on the graph, go to graph options, and I can call this position versus time. I can throw in more grid lines. I can make the uh, title any color I want it to be and sometimes you want to put in a legend. Usually you don't need a legend if you're only graphing one thing, but if we're doing kinetic potential total energy, we would click legend. On axes option, I'll call this position in centimeters. By default, the x-axis is automatically time in seconds. I don't really need to change anything there. I tell it done. And now I have my graph is titled. I have the y-axis labeled. I can click and resize this as needed. Stretch it whichever direction you want. So now the only thing I want to do is get the equation of this graph. So I'm going to highlight these points. I'm left clicking and dragging my mouse till the points are highlighted. And at the top, I have my graphical uh, equation fit options. Because linear is so common, there's a hot button for linear fit. So when I click linear fit, it gives me the equation. The slope is 25.45 centimeters per second, which is the velocity of the dune buggy. The y-intercept is the starting position at negative 0 0.018 centimeters. It gives me a correlation. And I can also include error in this. If I want to right click on that box, I get linear fit options and I can set it to either decimal places or significant figures. I can put the uncertainty on there. And on appearance, I can change the font size and I can also change the um, color of the text. So I tell it OK, and now I've got it larger 
and in green. So if I right click on this graph, I can copy it and insert it, paste it into uh, Word documents or slideshows. Now, any whatever window you click on always comes to the front. So sometimes you think I can't find something, it's gone. Well, if you right click on a window, you can move it to the back and there's my movie window, it shows up again. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a velocity graph. So you can click on your graph, left click over here and change it to X velocity if you want to, or if you wanna keep both graphs at the same time, you can say insert graph, and by default, the graph that comes up is always the last column in the data table, and it keeps the axis label that you had previously had. So I want this to be an X velocity graph, and I'm going to change my labels and titles. So this will be velocity in centimeters per second. My graph title will be velocity versus time. And when I tell it done, I don't get what I really expect. If the velocity is constant, we expect a horizontal line. Well, the problem over here is our scale. Um, this is zoomed in on between 23 and 27. So let's suppose I wanna go all the way up to 50 centimeters per second and my lowest value will be zero. Now it looks a lot more constant. Now we could do a best fit equation for the horizontal line, but it's usually preferable whenever we have something that's constant to run statistics. This is the one over two statistics. And when I click on that, it gives me my minimum, my maximum, and the mean and the median with standard deviation. So this graph is telling me the velocity, average velocity was 25.39 centimeters per second, plus or minus 0.67. That 25.39, is pretty close to the slope of our original line. So the other things that we can do with this, if we want to change the color or type of uh, points that are put on our graph, you can go into your data table, double click, and you can change things. So on options, instead of it being a red filled circle, I can make it um, a filled plus sign. I can change the color. I can put in error bar. There's a lot that I can do there. So this gives us a lot of functionality. So those are the basic features of Logger Pro's video analysis. Other video clips will highlight some of the other features.